Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 6, Genetic Change. This is the first and the second of the inquiry question sections and this one is going to be looking at biotechnology. So your learning intention is to investigate the uses and applications of biotechnology past, present and future, including analysing the social implications and ethical uses of biotechnology, including plant and animal examples. Really? Because I don't want this particular video to go for an hour, I think what we're going to try and do is to blast through some of the key aspects of the applications and uses of biotechnology, and we'll pull some of those out as we go along. In a lot of ways, this is a, an introductory kind of a focus for biotechnology, and a lot of the videos and a lot of the material that you'll look at in biology in this topic from here on uh, really does focus in on the uses and applications of biotechnology and some of their potential implications, especially what might happen uh, in the future. So just as a general thing, firstly, we want to make sure that you know what uh, biotechnology refers to. Uh, to describe some plant and animal examples uh, of the applications of biotechnology and then to go through all of that nonsense evaluating past, present, future, use of biotechnologies to modify plants and animals and to do that in a way that uh, analyzes their social and ethical implications. So lots of stuff to do, let's get to it. So the first thing that we need to identify is that biotechnology um, is defined as the industrial use of living organisms to manufacture food, drugs, or other products. We can also define biotechnology as the use of living organisms to make or modify a product which improves plants or animals or utilizes microorganisms for specific uses. And when we use this definition here, we're going much broader. In fact, biotechnology probably um, dates right back to the first examples of domestication. And if we're going to be serious about this, then that was the point where we started to interfere with the evolution of particular species. We started to select, artificially select, uh, certain uh, individuals who displayed traits that were um, appealing or advantageous to us um, and then to select for their breeding in order to try and increase the frequency of those desired traits within a population. So that's biotechnology. The fact that now a lot of it's done in test tubes or laboratories, it uses sophisticated um, gene editing tools, uh, doesn't change the fact that we are making changes to living things for some gain that we see as a result of all of that. And of course, we can do that with humans as well. So that's one of the reasons why this is a very potentially huge area in biology and one that we need to think about as we go through each of these key areas. So as I said, this is really going to form an introduction. I'm not going to go through every one of these areas or applications and uses of biotechnology in detail, but we will cover a lot of these over subsequent videos. I mentioned um, domestication and so we know, uh, especially here in Australia, we have a long history of uh, agriculture and aquaculture for the um, First Nations people that were involved uh, in managing the land and certainly um, have a very, still to this day, a very close relationship uh, with the land and manage that land in a, in a sustainable way. Uh, we also include in biotechnology the fermentation of alcohols. Uh, that can include bread making uh, with yeast. So the particular organism involved here is yeast. Uh, monoclonal antibodies, another application of biotechnology, cell cultures, biosensors, DNA technology. We will have a look at some of the gene or enzyme replacements. Uh, some of that involves uh, specific types of um, enzyme production. And, um, and so uh, we can include here things like human insulin production, uh, which we'll have a look at, which is also going to link into our discussion around uh, genetic and protein engineering. But we're also going to be looking uh, quite closely, particularly in the next video, at CRISPR as a gene editing technique uh, and one that is allowing us to be much more specific in terms of our gene or enzyme replacements as we look at the ways in which uh, the code in the genes is going to be used um, to express uh, and produce a particular type of uh, polypeptide protein uh, or enzyme. Gene detection, um, and we've, we've mapped the human genome 
We now know where all of these, uh, the sequence is, and we're trying to learn more each day about detecting particular genes, using gene detection in forensics, paternity testing, um, and trying to find out whether there's specific genes that code for specific um, diseases or disorders. Now, of course, that, that whole idea has then um, given birth to a range of different types of uh, questionably um, ethical studies or searches for particular types of genes that may um, affect some characteristics of humans that, that um, may not be popular. And, and I don't want to kind of go into that in too much detail because we'll talk about it in class. Um, and I think some of the areas in which uh, some of these sort of gene detection programs have, have looked at have been quite offensive. And genetic and protein engineering, uh, again, something that we're going to be having a little bit of a look at. We're going to uh, examine some things like cloning. Uh, and primarily, uh, we're going to be thinking about some of the industrial implications of biotechnologies, because that's where a lot of that has come from. We've learned a lot more about the human genome since we've mapped it. We've mapped a lot of uh, the genomes of a lot of other organisms now as well, and that's continuing right now. So I won't give you a list because I know it'll be out of date uh, very quickly. Um, but we're understanding more and more about how genes operate, how genes get switched on and off, how genes uh, code for particular types of polypeptides or um, where there are multiple genes acting in order to produce certain features. So um, this is a very complex and a, a very cutting edge kind of area of study by technology. And it's one of those things that you can always be learning something new in. And, and I do every day. Some of the techniques that we've applied these sorts of um, understandings about how we can um, change allele frequencies, make um, new traits or at least select for traits that we might want to increase in the population. And these are some of the techniques that we've uh, been able to use. I talked about selective breeding. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later on about uh, artificial pollination, which is a technique that we use uh, for plants and artificial insemination, which we've used on a number of species of animals. Sometimes inbreeding is something that we look at. We know that there's some potential challenges with inbreeding, but we also know there's some advantages in trying to take, uh, to try and maximize the desired uh, qualities. Hybridization is something that is, I guess, more common in plants than it is in animals. We'll look at gene cloning as well as whole animal cloning. We'll have a think about the ethics associated with transgenics or genetically modified organisms. And this is one of these areas where science really ran ahead of legislation. A lot of the things that we learned how to do weren't um, adequately covered by the laws that existed at the time. And so there's been a number of genetically modified organisms that um, have been part of our produce. And sometimes they made it to the, the supermarket shelves without being adequately labeled. Hopefully, well, fortunately, most of that's been addressed these days, but still it's a, it's a growing area and one that we can really look at. Gene therapy too has a lot of potential, um, particularly in relation to certain types of diseases. So it may be something like uh, cystic fibrosis, which we may be able to look at delivering maybe some type of a, uh, a CRISPR gene edit system um, in the same sort of way as maybe uh, Ventolin's delivered to asthmatics to allow those um, genes to get in and, and um, make some changes in the cells, in the, the lining of the lungs, reducing the mucus production and, and perhaps reducing some of the system uh, symptoms for cystic fibrosis sufferers. And I mentioned the Human Genome Project. That's something that uh, we got through a lot quicker than we expected we would. Um, but it's also thrown up a lot of very interesting uh, ethical and social um, questions about what we do with that information. And you'll, I'm sure, have seen or heard of movies like Gattaca or The Island, um, where, where we kind of um, think about some of the implications of understanding so much about the human genome um, and how we can, uh, I guess, address some of the questions around human health and where we draw lines. Um, 
uh, of what we can do and what we should do. So these are all the aspects of biotechnology that we've started to have a little bit of a look at. And I know I've, I've really barely raked the surface of um, what's involved in something like this. It's a massive area of biotechnology and we're actually going to have to pull some of these things out. We're going to have to look at some of the um, agriculture, uh, some of the domestication that um, is, I guess, uh, characteristic of a lot of the past applications of biotechnology. We'll look at some of the um, current and future implications of things like CRISPR, Cas9. Uh, we'll think about how this affects us. Uh, particularly as students, as uh, you're taking this further into the future, there's going to be so many more. You think about how much has changed in terms of computer technology. That sort of rapid rate of change is also happening in biotechnology. And a lot of the time, we're still trying to figure out how we should be applying that um, to our societies. And of course, that links into this area of ethics. Just because we can do something, should we do it? Where should we draw the line? And of course, these are techniques that are actually available now. And, and so something like uh, human clones and also the use of um, humans for germline uh, therapy. And this is a real, uh, we know that there are different implications of somatic cell therapy as opposed to germline therapy. And there is an example uh, where there has been an application of uh, CRISPR to uh, the production of humans uh, resistant to AIDS. So there's lots of things that are actually happening now and things we want to talk about and explore in class. And of course, you need to have some plant uh, examples and some animal examples and uh, I guess ones that are common in agriculture are the best ones to have a look at. We might look at the flavor saver, tomatoes, um, and I'm sure we can think of a whole heap of um, animals. Think about dogs and how different all the different breeds of dogs are. And the fact that those different dogs have been primarily bred um, initially, I guess, for being tame, but after that for um, watchdogs, for fluffy cute dogs, uh, for um, rounding up the sheep, so working dogs. Uh, there's a whole range of different reasons why dogs have been uh, bred, some not necessarily good reasons why as well, um, and that, uh, that they are such a uh, great companion to humans. So look, there's a lot of stuff in biotechnology. I've tried to bolt through this fairly quickly, and I know 14 minutes isn't quick, but nevertheless, uh, hopefully this gives you a nice little overview and from here we can start to pull some things out in a little bit more detail as we explore biotechnology in the next few videos. Thanks for watching.